Hello, everyone. Welcome to week two of language arts. First, I want to start with a review of what we did last week. So think back to language arts. I know it feels like a while ago. You had a lot of lessons since then, but try to remember what we worked on last week. And while we're discussing last week, I want to tell you, I didn't tell you last week, but I want you to keep all your papers together um, that we're working on. So if we have to review something or go back to what we did last week, you'll have all those together. So try to keep a hold of all of those for me. Okay, last week we worked on nouns and verbs, and then at the end we were practicing writing sentences with them. So right now, out loud, I want you to say the definition of, a, definition of a noun. What is it? Okay, a noun is a person, place, or thing. And then I want you to say the definition of a verb. Verb is an action word. So I want you now to give me an example of a common noun. A common noun would be a person, place, or thing, but it's not specific. So you could say store. That would be a common noun. Um, park, dog, cat, mom, dad. Now I want you to give me a proper noun example. So a proper noun, if we're talking about stores, that could be Walmart, Target, Best Buy. If we're talking about parks, you could say Washington Park, Kennywood Park. Um, what about verbs? What's an example of a verb that you could give me? An example of a verb could be swim, run, walk, eat, play. Any action word would be an example of a verb. So after we've reviewed that, if you feel like you still need to go back and work on that and brush up on that, you can do that. Uh, what we're going to be doing today, it involves nouns and verbs, but it's more focused on stories. So we're going to be looking at a short story. I'm going to pull it up on my screen, and then also we're going to be doing these questions. So I want you to get out these questions from your resource bag, and then let me share the story so you can see which story we're going to be doing. Here is the story that I want you to get out of your resource bag. It's called The Bee. So we're going to be working on reading comprehension, which is just your ability to be able to read the story and know what happened. And we're going to be practicing some skills that we can use while we're reading stories. And what I like to do and what I'm going to tell you to do when we work on this is read the story two times. The first time you're reading it, you're reading it to enjoy it, kind of just get the general idea of what's going on. Before you read the second time, you're going to go and look at your questions and see what the questions are asking you and what details they want you to look for in the story. And after you feel like you have a good understanding of the questions and what they're asking you, you go back and read it for the second time. The second time you're reading, you're looking for the details, the answers to the questions, picking up on anything you might have missed the first time while you were just reading it to enjoy it for fun. So I'm going to be reading this story with you. You can follow along on the screen with me or you can follow along on your paper. You can circle, underline anything that you feel is important. And like I said, first time we're just reading it to enjoy the story. So our story is called The Bee. Bees live in a house that is called a hive. There are three kinds of bees, workers, drones, and queens. Only one queen bee can live in each hive. If she is lost or dead, the other bees will stop their work. Bees are very wise and busy little creatures. They all join together to build cells of wax for their honey. 
Each bee takes its proper place and does its own work. Some go out and gather honey from the flowers. Others stay at home and work inside the hive. The cells which they build are all of one shape and size, and no room is left between them. The cells are not round. They have six sides. Did you ever look into a glass hive to see the bees while at work? It is pleasant to see how busy they always are. But the drones do not work. Before winter comes, all the drones are driven from the hive so that they don't eat the honey which they did not gather. It is not safe for children to handle bees. Bees have a painful sting that they use in their defense which I'm sure, I don't know if any of you have been stung by a bee, but I was once. I remember it, it was not very fun. It's definitely painful, like the story tells us. And there may have been some words in there that you may not know, you may not be very familiar with, but we're gonna work on using context clues to figure out those words, rather than just skipping them and not worrying about what they mean. So now we're gonna go and look at our questions that you should have from your resource bag. We're gonna look at these before we read the second time. Number one asks us, how many sides does the cell in the hive have? Number two, what happens to the drones in the winter? And don't answer these yet, even if you think you know the answer, we're gonna go back and find it in our story before we circle an answer. Number three, which is not a kind of bee? And number four, which work best describes bees? Okay. Now, like I said earlier, this time we're reading our story to understand the details and pick up on where our questions are and the possible answers to the questions. Something I want you to do while we read this time Pick up your pencil, pen, if you have a highlighter, and while we're reading, if you think you found an answer to a question, I want you to circle it, underline it, anything that will help you remember to go back to that spot for your answer. And if you want to read with me this time, or you can pause it and read it out loud yourself for extra practice, that's great. And I'm going to start on our second read. Bees live in a house that is called a hive. There are three kinds of bees, workers, drones, and queens. Only one queen bee can live in each hive. If she is lost or dead, the other bees will stop their work. Bees are very wise and busy little creatures. They all join together to build cells of wax for their honey. Each bee takes its proper place and does its own work. Some go out and gather honey from the flowers. Others stay at home and work inside the hive. So up to this point, if you've found any answers, like I said, circle, underline, whatever you need to do to know to go back to that spot for your answer. The cells which they build are all of one shape and size and no room is left between them. The cells are not round. They have six sides. Did you ever look into a glass hive to see the bees while at work? It is pleasant to see how busy they always are but the drones do not work. Before winter comes, all the drones are driven from the hive so that they don't eat the honey which they did not gather. It is not safe for children to handle bees. Bees have a painful sting that they use in their defense. So you should have circled or underlined where your answers are. Should make it easier while we answer these questions. And for the questions, we're going to do number one together, and I want you to try two, three, and four by yourself. So number one asks, how many sides does a cell in the hive have? And you should have something circled in your story. So I'm gonna go back to my other screen. Okay, so I want you just looking at your story now. Go back to what you have circled or if you didn't circle anything for this one, go back and look for an answer. How many sides does a cell in the hive have? Okay. You should have circled 
six. If you go back to the beginning, I believe it was in the first or second paragraph, we learned that. You should have circled that. Something that I like to do sometimes too, if I didn't circle that before, I like to do it after I find the answer just to show myself it's right here, I found the correct one. Because if you can't go back and prove that, that your answer is in the passage, it may not be correct. So that's something that you always wanna be going back and looking for to kind of show yourself that you found the answer. Okay, I'm going to read the rest of the questions for you and the answer choices, and you're going to circle the answers on your own. Number two, what happens to the drones in the winter? A, they sleep. B, they find a new hive. C, they are driven out. Or D, they repair the hive. What happens to the drones in the winter? I want you to answer that on your own. And go back in the story, find where the answer is. Take your time, do it right. Number three, which is not a kind of B? A, workers, B, kings, C, queens, or D, drones? Which is not a kind of B? Go back and find this answer, circle it. And number four, which word best describes bees? A, hardworking, B, lazy, C, stupid, or D, cuddly. And this we may not find in our passage. We have to do something that's called inferring. So we're figuring out which word would best describe a bee. Based off what you learned while reading that story, what do you think is the best word that would describe a bee after we learned what they do and their characteristics? How would you describe a bee? So I want you to save those answers. We're gonna go back and look at our passage again. And like I said, there may be a few words that we don't know in here. So I came across one word where it says, right where my mouse is here, each bee takes its proper place and does its own work. What do you think proper means there? I want you to say a definition out loud. If someone asked you what the word proper means, what would you say? You may know, which is great. If not, I want you to try to figure it out from that sentence. So how I would go about figuring out this word is I would look at the sentences around it first. So we see bees are very wise and busy little creatures. They all join together to build cells of wax for their honey. So they're all joining together and then we learn that each bee takes its proper place and does its own work. So when I read that I think each bee must have its own job that it knows that it has to do. So proper could be like the place where the bee belongs, the work they're supposed to be doing, its proper place, where it's supposed to be. And then let's keep reading, see if there's any other words that we may not know. If you didn't know the word hive, how could you figure that out while you're reading this? There's a clue up at the top. So if you would get down to the sentence and you see hive and you think, hmm, don't exactly remember what that is. You can go back and reread, that's one option. So at the beginning we see bees live in a house that's called a hive. We know it's a bee's house. And we can also use this picture down here too to help us figure out that is very useful. Not only the words, but pictures can be used as context clues as well to help you figure it out. 
And bees have a painful sting that they use in their defense. What is defense? I want you to tell me out loud. Again, use the sentences around it to help you figure it out if you don't know. Because I'm reading this and I read, it is not safe for children to handle bees. Bees have a painful sting that they use in their defense. And I think of defense, or you can think defense in football, like in sports, they're fighting the other team off. So it's something that the bees are using a defense. They're trying to fight off people because they see people as a threat to them or people are trying to harm them. So that is a defense. Good. A couple words there that we can figure out. And then I have one more question I want you to think about. And that is, are bees important to human survival? So do we need bees in order to live and go about our daily lives? Yes or no? Might not be as simple as you think. So the short answer is yes, we do need bees for human survival and for us to keep living. And the main reason for that is because they pollinate a lot of our food, which means like when you see bees on flowers and they're pollinating the flower, it's basically a process that's helping to produce seeds. And a couple foods that they pollinate that we need, berries, even cashews, almonds, uh, watermelon, avocados. So even coffee too was another one that I found interesting. So we do need bees for that reason. And I just thought that was interesting to relate back to our story because we don't really think about them as being something that we need. We just think of them as animals or insects that are out in nature. So keep that in mind. Bees are very important. And Bees have been dying off, so that's another problem that we're facing is we're trying to keep bees around so that they're able to pollinate these foods for us and move seeds around. Okay, so what I want you to do now is we have to answer a question in the comments. I had you do these questions here. We went over number one. I want you to answer number two, three, and four in the comments. So all you need to do is just type the number two and then put the letter for that answer choice. You don't need to write out the answer, just the letter. And then one thing after you do two, three, and four with the letters of the answers. Under that, I need you to help me out with something in the comments. I want you to tell me how difficult this was for you. And it's gonna be on a scale of one to five. So if you thought this was super easy, you didn't need me here to help, you could have done it by yourself, I want you to type a number one down there with your answer. If you thought it was a little bit hard, but you still could have done most of it by yourself, put a two. If you thought it was kind of a good difficulty, it was a little bit hard, but you could also still do it, put a three. If this was very challenging for you, and you had a hard time finding the answers, I want you to put a four. And then if it was super hard and you're glad that I was here to help, you wouldn't have been able to do it if I weren't here to help, I want you to put a five. So to review, you're putting your answers to number two, three, and four, and then you're giving me a rating on a scale of one being very easy to five very hard. And that'll just help me to figure out what we should work on next week and if these assignments are at a good difficulty level for all of you. So answer those questions for me, give me your rating, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. Bye.